Hello everyone and welcome. I am here for a short little tutorial on trigger conditions in Power Automate flows. When I first discovered this feature, I was like, oh, that's quite important. And it was kind of, it felt like a little hidden feature that I had to kind of dig for, uh, the arcane knowledge of Power Automate. So what this is about is how to set your Power Automate flows so they only start under certain conditions. Now, in the last video, we talked about the various trigger types, when an item is created or an item is modified uh, or button type flows. So what we're looking at here is generally the when an item is created or modified type flows and a way to say, but only run it if certain conditions exist. And I use this quite frequently, first of all, to reduce the number of times flows are run. So you may have a, a limitation on the number of flows you can run uh, from licensing or just the uh, general limitation in Microsoft 365, which is quite high. Also, uh, it confuses things when a flow runs, but it doesn't need to run. You can actually get undesirable results. And the big one that I use it a lot for is that you can create what's called an infinite loop. So often this type of flow, it'll say the projects list will update and uh, then there's a status field that gets updated by that projects list. Well, now I've just triggered based on the project list being modified and then I modify the projects list and so it triggers again. So it's an infinite loop, it'll keep updating itself. So this is where you can stop those infinite loops because it would only trigger if such and such a condition is set and you make sure you set that condition the first time through. So for example, we have a projects list we'll look at in a second here. And let's say that we want to email the project manager when the project is started. So what we'll do is we'll say, let's create a flow that emails the project manager, but it only runs if the status of that project list item is set to started. So let's take a look how to do this. Here we are in the projects list on our modern sandbox. And notice there's a status field and there's a project manager field. And what we're going to do is tell our flow to only run when the status is started and the project manager is not blank. Because we're going to email that project manager. So let's do this. So here in Power Automate, I'm going to my flows. And I already have the flow that we're talking about, I'm waiting for it to load here. Projects, when a project starts, email the PM. So I like to put the list name or library name at the beginning of the flow name here, just to make it easier. Oh, what is this referring to? When a project starts, email the PM. Let's edit this flow. And here is the trigger condition when a item is created or modified in the projects list. So notice when I double click this trigger condition, and it comes up with this little panel. There are some advanced parameters here, but it's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is in the settings section here. Go to settings and scroll down a little bit and you'll see there's a section called trigger conditions and add. So I can add trigger conditions here. And what happens in this area is I put in what's called an OData expression, and the OData is a format or a way of making commands here that Power Automate is expecting. And the OData expression, if it's evaluated to true, then this trigger will run, otherwise it will not. And you can add multiple here and they're all anded together. So you can have multiples. Um, I'm gonna do, I usually do just one, but I do my uh, anding in that one expression. And let me show you how I do this. So first of all, we know that SharePoint has sort of complex field types. So status is a choice field and project manager is a person field. Project name is a single line of text. These are all different field types and the OData expression needs to know about that. So the first thing that we do is we go into the list settings and we take a look at those field types. Okay, here's a status field. Oh, I see it's a choice field. Well, let me click on it. Oh, I see, status. And there's a couple of things that we want to 
be cognizant of here. First of all, look in the, the header here. Notice at the very end it says field equals status. So what this is, is saying the internal name of this field is status. I can give it a different column name here. The eternal name stays the same. And it might be a special thing. You'll see underscore X0020 or something like that. If you create your fields with spaces in them, the internal name will have some ugly stuff in it. So this is one of the reasons we always create columns with no spaces and then change them over here as much as we like. So this field is called status. And then there's it's a choice field and there are some particular choices available to the user. Let me show you that. So what, what I do is to create these trick and conditions, I bring up uh, Copilot or the AI of your choice. So let's bring up Copilot here. And I'll just split the screen, Copilot on the right. And let's just shrink that a little bit prioritize. Okay, so tell Copilot what you want to do. What I do need to do is an OData trigger condition. So I'm going to, I have this on the other screen, so I'm just going to paste it here so I don't have to type. And let me just move my photo over here. Okay, I need an OData trigger condition statement for a PA trigger condition. So PA, Copilot knows that that is Power Automate. Uh, let's put Power Automate flow, just to be super clear, trigger condition. Um, this flow is only going to run if the status is started and the PM field is not blank. So let's put that in there as well. And now, in order to build the OData, OData expression, Copilot needs to know the data types. The PM fields internal name or let's be really clear, SharePoint internal name. So let's go back to that list settings screen and let's take a look at the status uh, da, da, PM field. Here it is, project manager. So I'm gonna click on project manager and I'm going to check what the field equals name is it. So the field name is project manager, no spaces. Okay, I'm gonna copy that. And SharePoint name is project manager. And the type is, and here we can say person or group. Just copying and pasting wherever I can, person or group. And it, it doesn't allow multiple. This would make a difference on how it works. Allow multiple and allow multiple is no. The status field, we already looked at that. We know it's called status. And so the status field internal name is status. And these are the choices. Okay, so I just prepared that internal name. Okay, so let's run this query. OData trigger conditioner. Okay, so there it goes, the so plain text. And this is the kind of stuff that I don't want to do myself. Let's just take a look at that. Okay, so at and equals trigger output. So that's what is the output of the trigger. Body slash status. So status, that doesn't look right actually. Not empty trigger body project manager email. Okay, so I happen to know by looking at this that that is not correct. Status is a multi, it's a complex structure. So let us go back to Copilot. And good lesson for us all is that sometimes you have to check AI's work, don't you? Okay. The status field is a choice field. Please fix the expression. Hopefully it'll get it this time. Great catch. Status value, there we go. That's what I expect to see. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go back to my flow and I'm gonna paste it in here. All right, 
So this, the status of value is started and the project manager email is not empty. So now we can save. And of course, we would test then. So that's uh, the basics of using a trigger condition to, to conditionally start your Power Automate flow. All right, I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, I would love to give you more detail of that if you feel the need or uh, you have a specific requirement, feel free to reach out. All right, bye for now.